Hello everyone, I'm Super Raptor and welcome back to the Total Victory Challenge! Yay! I'm sure so many of you are excited for this. Wait for me to get back into this after a long time being away. Uh, long story short, real life happened. That includes my computer actually having to go in for a repair and having the difficulty time of getting the guy repairing on it to uh, give me status updates or indeed make any real progress on my computer. And basically been out without my computer for like a month and a half of that time. The rest of the time that I did have my computer, I needed it for work-related stuff and traveling all over. But anyways, finally have time to sit down, have my computer back, work on this. Um, and in a good enough shape to try this campaign, which we're going to do now. I basically just gave you the Quip Notes version for those of you who didn't watch my Into the Breach channel update video, which, let's face it, I don't imagine you guys want to see me bubble through my first playthrough of Into the Breach. So, yeah, this is just that update right here. So we are now going to be doing the next video, or the next campaign, which is Climb Mount, Mount Nardania. Now, interesting reference to Climb Mount Nardania, and that is referencing Japan. And why is this so re uh, interesting is that uh, back in uh, World War II, it was uh, Climb Mount Fuji was the Japan message that was sent in to... Uh, uh, attack Pearl Harbor and thus get the U.S. involved in World War II. So it's a basically a play on the historical context of how the Soviet Union is now claiming climb one of their mountains to invade Japan. I just thought that was that was clever, Eugene. You did it clever. Very well done. Let's, let's launch this. to 1975. Japan-Soviet relationships are poisoned by the Soviet occupation of the Kuril Islands. Hence, the two countries have not been able to ratify a formal peace treaty since the end of World War II. 1979 to 1980. The Soviet Union increases troops and naval assets in the Kuril area. Japan retaliates by hardening its stance towards the USSR and increasing its military spending. 1982. Japan allows the deployment of U.S. advanced F-16 bombers on its soil. The USSR answers by transferring SS-20 missiles from Europe. 1983. The Japanese Prime Minister declares his intent to turn Japan into an unsinkable aircraft carrier. The reply from the USSR is immediate. In an era of modern technology, unsinkable aircraft carriers do not exist. November 1984, the joint U.S.-Japanese naval exercise Fleet X-85 in the Sea of Japan gets as close as 500 nautical miles from Vladivostok. The Soviet fleet is put on high alert. December 4th, 1984, Fleet X ends, but Soviet Navy intelligence and the Politburo are convinced that it was just a rehearsal for a real imminent strike. The green light is given for a preemptive strike on Japan and its U.S. naval bases. December 6th, 1984. When the coded message, Climb Mount Norodnaya, is transmitted to Soviet forces, several airborne and naval infantry divisions are ready to strike Japan. At dawn, the first wave of Soviet paratroopers lands on Japan, while a mechanized thrust strikes from the Kuril Islands. All right, there we have it, saying that uh, the amphibious airborne operation in Japan is about to fall. So give the western flank. We need to get at least three enemy aircraft carriers. Psh, we're going to get all five. Total victory challenge. Uh, he's just saying that we are going to be deported by two aircraft carriers, one from the north, one from the south. We have the Marines land anywhere, and we have the camera or Kuznet, Kuznetsov, naval group coming from the southeast, and. Uh, yeah, we need to be aware about this, but we're going to take this out at the beginning. Uh, 60 days to get three airports. We're going to get all five in a pretty short time. So, let's uh, discuss uh, what we watched in that video. Uh, for the most part, that was pretty true. They did leave out some things, probably because they weren't entirely relevant. But, um, 
everything was true other than the fact that the Soviet Union is like, oh, they're really planning to invade us this time. Let's quickly uh, invade Japan. And no, no. Um, there were a few things happening at the time. First, Japan, China. Uh, I think it's the Sino and Japan peace treaty. Basically, kind of signed sort of a formal declaration of friendship, which was seen in anti Soviet Union. Because, just face it, China and Japan were not on the greatest of terms at this point in time. Uh, Bear versus Dragon about happened about five years earlier, or at least that's when it was supposed to in these fictional settings. Uh, another thing to point out, uh, Soviet Union is in Afghanistan at this point. So that's a lot of military force power that's tied up. Not to mention they have to prepare for uh, the European forces in Europe and also having forces here in uh, ready to try to strike and secure all of Japan. It's not feasible, uh, I don't think. I mean, I don't know the exact troop numbers, but that's just that's a lot. That's a three-front war that they'd have to fight unless they massively just pull out of Afghanistan entirely and lose all of their gains and try to stop it, to, to stop it. I would think that they would have to try only do that if they were defending themselves, not trying to start another world war. Uh, interesting quote where it says, uh, turn aircraft, uh, see Japan into an unsinkable aircraft carrier. And that Soviet Union response was, uh, in modern technology, unsinkable aircraft carriers do not exist. That quote is kind of different, at least the one that I read. Uh, the, the actual quote at least it was from the trade minister of the Soviet Union, said that Japan's unsinkable aircraft carrier would sink in about less than 20 minutes, followed shortly thereafter by the United States and the Soviet Union. And he pretty much said, and when that happens, that pretty much is the end of humankind. Reference to the fact that nuclear arming has set in. So, that, uh, another quote right there, that would be uh, fairly interesting. And, uh, anything else that I should mention about that whole thing? Oh yeah, there's no way that the Soviet Union would ever think that Japan was capable of really invading the Soviet Union with America on its east coast, because Japan's military forces, while it was increasing military spending, was still a self-defense force. Its army was really only capable of defending its islands and not really able to project any kind of military power abroad. So, again, this this is a very high stretch scenario of this whole invasion of Japan and catching them completely off guard. But here we are. We're going. We're invading Japan. And one thing I'd like to note is that for all of the campaigns, all of the Blue Four campaigns, you're the defender at the beginning. You are holding off the enemy aggressors. All of the Red Four campaigns, you're the aggressors. You're invading all of the Blue Four nations. Just something to think about. See, where are you just trying to push on this? But anyway, so we are definitely going to be invading. And I have, of course, developed some tactics on how to do this. So, what are we going to do? Well, as you can see, we need to go and capture at least the air forts before we can proceed on. And the thing is, I have done this without the American fleet ever showing up. I've been that quick. It's uh, pretty, pretty ingenious to do. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is that we are going to take out, we're going to get the task force Kuz, uh, Kuz, Kuznet, Kuznetsov. God, that's so hard to pronounce. Major, I can confirm. Wait, Major, I can confirm that Kuznetsov arrived at the scene. Uh, okay, so we're a Major in, in, intending to invade literally half of Japan. And I'm saying literally half because we have two islands plus half of the main island. <laughs> so, okay, you're, you're assigning a Major to capture all of Japan. But I get it. I'm an amazing Major. I can do it. It's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll do this. We'll uh, put in Kuznetov here. And we are going to be getting... Here we go. We are going to be getting the 319th Helicopter Regiment. And we are going to be attacking Gobo. At the start. We are, yes. We're ready to attack the airfield on your order. Very, very good. Now, there's a little bit of problem with the Gobo. We are at Alpha. 
if we are to look at the forces of Gobo, of, what is it, Gobo? Yeah, Gobo. They've got some helicopters, I mean, whoop-dee-doo, and whatever. Actually, here, I'll just, this is easier if I just start, pretend like I'm going to do an invasion. So we have all helicopters. We're basically doing a heli rush. That thing that's frowned on every time you go into a multiplayer game. Amazingly, the computer doesn't care. So, we're going to be heli rushing the computer, but not in a way that you would expect. Uh, the reason why we're heli rushing is if we look, do you see a support tab? I don't see a support tab. There is no anti-aircraft in this army. There is also no man pads. They've got Udo Renz, they've got Hans, and they've got a uh, Shouju Buntai. But no AA pieces. They've got no AA in this entire deck at all. But they do have 16Q Marushikis. And you're probably thinking, Psh, look at the MI-24P. We've got eight of those. We've got two MI-24V Ps. Yes, there's a catch. They do have the Kokon Missile. They've got four of the Kokon missiles each. This one be the Kokon and the Kokon M, 2022 AP power. Yes, that can penetrate. The Kiyomarkashiki has 20 front armor. Yes, that's really good. Downside is that's really kind of doing like one to three damage around. I mean, I don't I don't know the, the formula off the top of my head, but you need several missiles to take out the Kiyomarkashiki. And now if you can get on the side, that takes less missiles. The problem is they have 16 of these things. And we've got uh, basically 40 missiles. And we're going to need multiple missiles to take down each Kiyomaru Shiki. And these things have a, basically a 50% accuracy rate. So half of them are going to miss. So technically we're shooting 20 missiles at 16 tanks that can somewhat shrug off this, or sponge up the damage a little bit. So we need this FOB. We, however, cannot put the FOB here in Alpha. I know I'm explaining this rather than showing you. I'm just showing you my process of how I figured this all out and how basically I started this series by realizing this. We can't start an Alpha with a FOB because we're going to be hit by both fronts and we can't do that with the helicopters. So, fortunately, we've got five points left. We are going to bring in, if I could find them. Here we go. No, not them. Uh, these guys, I, one of these. Uh, now there's a, there's a supply convoy. Where do you guys go? You're on that, okay. PDB, PDB there, the air. There's a, there is a supply convoy that you're able to deploy here. Which, hang on, let me just try to figure out which, Vision to bring in here. These are them. Oh, I see what I did now. Okay. All right. So I'll do this properly. The thing is, these guys, with their come in, they pair drop in, they land here at Osaka, and then you move them down here. Ta-da! They have now attacked from Osaka. We can't take any of these troops because, well, these troops don't actually have any initiative. But if we show, we now have two Osaka. We've got our FOB location. Okay, good. I talked about this a lot. Let's get into more of our setup for the rest of our forces. We are going to be taking the 217th VDV Regiment. And this is the most vital place that we are going to be going. Why, are, why do I say that? Because if we want to be fast, we need to be in striking range of all the airports. We're already going to try to take one. This, we can move our land forces across. This one, we're going to get once we continue forward. These two will be taken by these land forces. But we need to take this. Because once we get... I said go here. Once we get this, we are able to bring in forces from a different uh, regiment military regiment right here and so we are going to land both of these so that's there we're going to land this here and what do these guys have they've got nanasan shikis and hans and mitsubishis what do we have well we've got uh vdv which are good 
we've got uh, robots, and we've got conquerors, and I think it's the same for both. Well, these guys are just BDB. But anyways, it's basically the recoilless rifles that we mainly have to worry about with these groups, but our forces should be able to take them out. And I'm going to move this up. I like to kind of move this Yak 141 here. Kind of, they're not the best. I use them mainly to try to take out helicopters, like this Super Cobra. But it used to be harder when the Super Cobra had uh, AA missiles. Now, I, they used to be able to shoot down these Yak 141s, so I wouldn't dare to put them here. But now that they only have seed, I can try to snipe Super Cobras if they ever move from this position. They don't normally do it. And if we go and attack, usually, usually the AI retreats. Sometimes they won't, but we will see if they actually retreat. They do indeed retreat. So we have this location. It says, now we can deploy the second guard tank division directly on Japan's soil. With such a unit on our side, we have no right to fail. That is true. I will show you a little bit of the uh, second tank division. We can bring in T-60... We can bring in T-64As, T-64BMs, T-64BV1s. Are you salivating? I'm already salivating about how good of a tank we are getting. We are getting the guard's rifle, which are just BT-70s and uh, whatever. And uh, we also can we also bring in Buratinos. Ah, this, this entire second guards division is what we're going to be using to push Nagasaki and, Ken and Kanoya. But we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to keep them here so that to defend this location. This guy has moved for his uh, move right here. We're also going to move up these two naval infantry regiments. Now I'm sure they intended this infantry regiment to go to Obama. But we're not going to be invading the former president of the United States. With this group, that's going to be a land force right here from Osaka. It's going to be coming forward next turn. These guys are going to have to move here into Gulf. We're going to have to push double combined forces into Mas Masuda. But I am going to... don't have the initiative to R&R, &R, so we'll do that next turn. Okay, so we've got everything set up. Now we need to focus on the fact that we are invading Gobo. So, Gobo is going to be the place that we're going to strike, and we need to be very smart about our missile management. So, time to plan this out. Time to get this mission started. We just need to make sure we can kill all the Kiyomaru Shikis. There are 16 in total, and this is an AI. The AI will throw them directly at us. As you can see, we have 13, 13 points to start with. We can't really take much losses if we want a total victory. So we're going to move the FOB back here, as well as a little helicopter right there, since we don't really have any others. As for recon, we only really have one that we need, and that will be the MI-24K. And how do I want to set this up? I want to set them up over here. In fact, I want all the helicopters to be here. Now, we're going to get one MI-24V, because the enemy is a little bit sneaky. They have, they do spawn with helicopters, and they try to go around. And this MI-24V is able to shoot those down. We're definitely going to want a VP here, and I like to put the VPs on the outside to as for different squads. And then we get, like, a squad of four MI-24Ps for both of them. Like that. And do we have everything? Looks like it. Alright, so we'll get one uh, KIA 29TV. I'll put it right here with that. So we have a lot of rocket pods, we have a lot of missiles, we have got the FOB. Let's go. Alright, so these guys are going to be right here. Actually, no. These guys are going to be here. Like that. These guys, we're gonna set up right here. I'm gonna do that so that they're facing the right way. And these guys, uh, I'll put put here. Okay. Why do I have them all set up this way? Well, we're going to be rushed by a bunch of stuff. Uh, Kiyomaru Shigis, especially. So I'm going to just turn off the Kokon missile at the start to make sure that the first vehicle that we fire these Kokons at are indeed 
the Kia Marashiki. If the Wrangler is just a land based vehicle, then yeah, Rocket Pods. Rocket Pod. Ahoy! Just kill them all and be done with that. We're going to be saving up our points because we're going to need lots of supply. And we just sit. Wait. I see that there's a couple of helicopters there. The Mi 24B would love to make an acquaintance if those guys do indeed try to move forward. But. The AI will be uh, throwing its tanks against us. We just need to again sit back and wait. So we'll go on to very fast. The AI doesn't really change its tactics very much. But they are taking a little longer than they normally do. Usually I have Kiyo Margoshiki just rushing down this road. Uh, let's change the altitude of this guy. See if you can see anything. Up, oh, there he is. Yep, they're moving up. So, MI-24B should be able to take out those LH-60Ds. One out. Another IGLA missile. Oh, that missed. Oh, interesting fact I should tell you about. These things have uh, these twin auto cannons. Believe it or not, you can actually do damage to our cheekies. There they are. Bullet time. We're going to turn off weapons. They're like, what? You're turning off the weapons? Yes. And then we're turning them immediately back on so that the Kokov missiles can happen. We're going to do the same thing for this, turn these off, turn these back on, and then we're going to organize them so that they move up. Those two Kimargo Shikis are taken out, so we have a Nanosad Shiki here. That's going to absorb a lot of the missiles. Oh no, actually they're focusing on the Kimargo Shiki. Yep, come on, take them out. Alright, so the Kimargo Shikis are dying. Now here's the problem. We are running out of missiles. We need to go back for a quick fob resupply. These guys now have to take over and hold on to the defense. Move this guy over here, and we can move these guys up over here so that their auto cans can take those out. And my 24 people fire. So we're going to be resupplying here, and to stall the enemy, we're going to bring in a couple of KA-29 TVs, an extra rocket pod stoppage. All right, well, first attack was stopped. Half of our forces are going back to reload with missiles. I know these guys, a lot of them are out of missiles. This guy does not. He still has some left, and we do need to have these guys because they have rocket pods. Most of these guys used all the rocket pods in that attack. That will happen. That's just the nature of it. Now, we've taken already 1,200 points out. I think we killed maybe seven, maybe eight Q Marcus Shikis in that attack. I'm being hopeful that it was that many. Maybe a little less, but I do know he killed at least six. Fire six in that. Now, we just wait for them to send the rest. And we hope that they do that by the uh, after we get these guys all reloaded up. It seems like they're all reloaded up. Oh, here's some red suits. That's perfectly fine. Rocket pods, go. Stop them from their push against our forces. Okay, so those red suits are done. These guys are reloaded, rearmed, and ready to kick some butt. Let's move them back here. You guys now can then take over and go back to the FOB for a refill. Here come the toes. The MI-24 is going to have to intercept that. In fact, we will bring in the other MI-24 because this guy is going to have to go. This guy's going to have to go back for a uh, resupply as well. And uh, the thing is, you can always keep your helicopter moving when you're flying AA. This is viable in the game as well. Always keep your helicopter moving when it's firing AA missiles because it's the same accuracy and stabilizer while it is moving. And while it's moving, it gives you a better chance to uh, get out of danger. If it has an AA piece fire at it, you can keep it moving in direction and hopefully get out of range. Because if you tell it to attack, it will fly, then it will like, point its gun up and then um, it will, it will point its head up, then we'll have to level off, and then fire the AA missile. That's just a lot of time of trying to acquire a target to stabilize and stuff, when literally you don't lose any performance by just firing on the move. So our AA is back up, our other AA is resupplying, and especially with more rocket pods. And these guys have already drained half the fob. Now we're going to run out of missiles, we're going to drain this fob, but that's all right. We've got MI-26s and MI-6s. You're asking why am I saving up so many points? It's for these things, to be able to resupply our helicopters when the need desperately arises. And these guys are done. So, Mr. Backups will all come over here and resupply. 
and we'll go into it very fast again. We'll wait for the opponents to move forward like that. So those Mitsubishi managed to waste some of our missiles. That's not ideal. Yeah, we'll move these guys here. Um, and usually we'll be able to take this out without any losses. There's no need to rush. No need to rush at all. We'll move this guy over here. And yeah, we're just waiting for more enemy forces. Here's the cup, the next Gilmar Shikis. And he stopped. Yep, here comes more. All right, so I am going to be turning off these guys' co-cons so that they don't waste them. These guys are far enough back that I can leave those on. Fine, so it's not ideal that they've wasted half of their ammunition, but they definitely have a lot of rocket pods and these guys are in prime position to flank the enemy. So as long as you keep them in squads and you manage the COCOD missile supply, this is easily doable. Now, the reason why I'm not rushing out to take down these guys right away is because they will eventually come to me and if they come here, there's a lot of buildings, sites, and everything. You lose sight, you basically lose the missile. So here they come. Turn these off, turn these back on. Turning these off, turning these back on. We're just going to need these missiles to kill everything. MI-24V is here. I'm going to be firing at the KB-107. So, these are our troop transports. We'll take these out. All right. There's another one over here. That MI-24V should be able to see it. There it comes, the Kiyomaru Shiki. Wall of missiles does take that guy out. MI-24V is going to shoot down this KV 107 here. All right, that's good. Mana 10 Shiki are coming forward, and the Mi 24 b are actually running out of exits. So I am going to have this guy move forward to assist in the rocket pod. But they do have pretty good guns to try to defend it. The Mi 24 b is going to assist with its last two Igla missiles, able to take out those guys. Now these guys need to definitely come in. The Kiyomaru Shikis are starting to break through a bit. They are, they are taking a lot of damage, they are panicked quite a bit, and my 24 bees are out. Uh, we do need to have some more KA-29. They are starting to overrun our position, but our cannon should be able to hold that off. This is are going out. I haven't really seen them throw all their KV-107s at us. It's a little bit of a different tactic. You guys need to go back for a resupply immediately. Well, you guys are trying to hold off the enemy forces. Where they're pushed forward. Kiyomaru Shikis are taking quite a beating. They are panicked, but they haven't taken enough damage. Now, I'm going to get ahead of this. I'm going to be dropping both the Mi 26s here right at the start, and I'm going to bring in more Ka 29 TBs just to guard our entrance to our base as well. The Kiyomaru Shikis have a whole bunch of problems associated with them. And the MI-24Ps should be able to take these guys out. Alright, so the rest of these guys are going to now fly back to the FOB to rearm because the MKA-29 TVs are going to try to keep these things at bay with their rocket pods. And their regular cannons. These guys are pretty formidable. Their cannons and such. They don't have quite the, they don't have the AP of the MI-24P, but they do have quite a bit. Kiyomaru Shiki not having a very good time. Neither of the show you but type. As you can see, the FOB is draining out. This is why I dropped the MI-26s to resupply the rest of our stuff. We'll bring in one more MI-6, and these guys are all done. We need to back to the front immediately to take out these Kiyomaru Shikis. Okay, we're going to line them up as such. And these guys we're going to put over here with the rocket pods. Trying to find a good position. And these guys are all resupplying. Look how fast those MI-26s are dropping in supply. And some of these guys haven't even gotten their COCON missiles back. So that is, so we definitely need to wait for the other MI-6 to come back. Here they come. More of those COCON missiles are coming from the MI-24Ps. Look, they took those into the face like a boss. So this is why you have to be very management. Only one DP, uh, damage tick of their health per missile. 
But this is fine. We've actually been got to the front. I think we've killed most of the Kiyomaru Shikis with this tactic. Rocket pods should be able to finish them rest off, and if and if these things run out of rocket pods, I can kill them with the auto cannons. More Nanatan Shikis are here. Come on, guys, why don't you guys pop? So, MI6, we're going to put that here. Now, these guys are empty. We're just going to throw them in the mountain range over there. How many missiles? Are you guys all resupplied? I don't think all of you are 100% resupplied, but you are close enough. Let's uh, get some magic happen. And we are going to attack forward. We're going to attack the Kiyomaru Shikis with our auto cannons. Because they are one or two health, these auto cannons will kill the Kiyomaru Shikis. They just need to get close enough to fire. Yes, the Kiyomaru Shikis do have uh, uh, grounding machine guns on top, but these things can take it. They're a little bit armored. Let me just click on that so that everyone just focused on actually shooting their cannons at these guys. Oh, uh, we just fire all the missiles. That works as well. It's a little bit of waste on supply, so let's just get the other MI6 in. But, anyways, these guys are going to go back to the FOB. And you do have to watch out. The FOB's out of fuel. Sometimes they won't actually land. So with these guys, we will move forward, and we need to turn off the Kokons. Because if there's any more Kiyomaru Shikis that did not die in their double suicidal assault of mass Kiyomaru Shikis, we need to be able to kill them. So I think we've killed most of those Kiyomaru Shikis. If, there should be only like two or three left, if any. And we'll take that out. Ooh, Hachi Nana Shikis. He's shooting auto cannons, targeting system. We gotta move this guy back. Oh, dang it, we lost an MI-24V. Well, that's not supposed to happen. Well, here's an example of, do they do have auto cans that you do need to watch out for. But these guys are down to suicide infantry. That's kind of indicative of the fact, includes the fact that they don't have any more Kiyomaru Shikis left. So we're going to keep this up. I am going to use you to shoot at those cargo trucks, just so that we can kill the cargo truck for cargo truck's sake. Because they do make quite a bit of explosion when they blow up. Okay, let's go. So we're gonna move them there, and yep, just as I saw it, you guys. Uh, why do you have to make things so complicated? I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna land. You land. I made a mistake. Don't need you to pull up. Come on, hurry up, land. All right, good. So we will need to supplement this with a bunch of KA-29 TBs. All right, so these guys are in position. We don't want to go directly over the town because that is basically an infantry uh, haven. As you can see, there's a lot of infantry in here. And the AI will be stupid enough to move the infantry around to allow our helicopters to try to, well, rocket pod. It sucks that we didn't lose the uh, MI-24B, but I think we can still make this work. These guys definitely can kill stuff, especially with their cannons. They do have the exceptional optics guy, so he will be able to spot these infantry for all these cannons. Do not underestimate the good the cannons of a good MI-24P, especially with the fact they still have rocket pods. So they only have 100 points left. We are cleaning this up. Without a single CV killed, we are going to win this battle. You are completely out of ammo. You do have Kokon missiles, so I will turn those on. In case there's any vehicle that you can shoot at. In fact, let's turn all your weapons off. And turn all your weapons on. And finish off with just firing all of our missiles. We just need to kill the Oh! Well, there we go. Hacha Hachi D Shiki C V. Well that will definitely round out our win just nicely. And the missiles were missed. And Gearbox, okay. There we go! And we win! We only lost an MI-24V, but really, you shouldn't have to lose anything. That was just a mistake on my part at the beginning. Total victory. Everything destroyed. The infantry school did escape. And they will usually do that. And they will always retreat here. But, interesting, they will never actually launch an attack on Gobo in their depleted state. Even though they have infantry, and they can be very cheeky about it, 
They will never actually attack Gobo. And there we have it. We can leave Gobo undefended. We've got the first air base. We've got a place where we can draw, drop troops in to take these out. And we're ready to we're going to be ready to attack uh, uh, Masuda right here. Now, we're going to pretty much cut the episode here. But I do want to bring note to his area right here of where we're going to be attacking. I'll bring this up probably in the next episode as well. So if you want to skip ahead. They do have Apaches, they have Little Birds, they do have, but they mainly are infantry. These guys are Super Cobras, but uh, they are also mainly infantry. Yes, they've got some artillery, but mainly just infantry. Infantry, infantry, infantry. These guys do have Nana, Nana Yon Cheeky A's, but the good news is they have low armor. And not very good uh, uh, armor penetration. And with some, you know, AA as well. So, that's pretty much most part. These guys do have C's and G's. They have a little bit better guns, but not the same so in the way of armor. And they've got some helicopters and AA, you know, a good combat force. But mainly they're, they're infantry forces, and they do have thunderbolts. Yeah. And uh, if I could just bring this up. Yep, we've got, like I said, T-64As, MBMs, MBVs, which are more than a match for any of those Nanny Young Cheekies, especially if we back them up with everything else. So this force by itself should be able to take out the rest of this area. We're not going to launch any attacks today because, it, well, it's the end of our turn. I'm going to hit the end turn. I don't think the AI will actually do any attacks no, they don't. Good. Yep, we have uh, Supremacy by the South Korean squadron cast off this point from Busan. Seems they want to play the sh heroes. Make sure our troop transports are safe. Oh, I'm going to do more than that. In the next episode. I just cut it off. We'll just start it up on the next episode from right here. So thank you all so much for watching. We're off to a very good start. Minus one helicopter mistake on my part. And I will see you all in the next episode.